Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> so, no one else? Happy Valentine's Day, Peter. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, if no one else, we'll close this portion of the uh, public comment and move right into the business. So, everyone, look over the Village Board meeting for January 24th. Does anyone have any questions? Does Heather have it all? Right. Thanks, Thank you. June? No. You're good, Carl. Good. Yeah. Good, good. All right. Exceptional job. I'm going to ask for a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the village board. Motion. Second. Trustee Lauer? Second. Trustee Belkane? Aye. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Apolito? Aye. Motion passes. All right, Heather, you've got a budget modification, or is that Jake? Oh, it's <coughs> it's a sewer modification. And we're moving um, something, actually this is your, I don't know, I'm not going to move this one. They're looking to move money from the line for uh, septic hauling to uh, engineering. Uh, there's some of the ongoing work that we're uh, working with the town on uh, the uh, engineering report. That was some of the work that they said. No engineer or uh, Labella. Labella. Oh, sure. Okay. So that's $1,682.50? Yep. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions about that? Yep. Modification? No? Mm -hmm. That's our motion to approve the budget modification. Did you answer it? I'll make that motion. Second. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Belkane? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Deputy Mayor Toledo? Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> so, bills tonight, I think, uh, Al and Judy, right? Yeah, but Jude's still working on it. Jude's still working on it? Did anyone have anything that stood out? Any questions? <coughs> Jake, you yeah. No? Nothing? Mm -hmm. There was a, a battery cable for $1,300. That's what that defensive battery is. It's really long. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think the tractor trailer or what? <laughs> I think uh, that might be the three batteries in the cable, and maybe the, just the cable part showed up on the list. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to get used to this new format to see. Do you know what page it's in? Yeah, page, sir. 
I'm trying to find it myself. That's how there was on the question. Page, page four, it says 334 battery cable. It's not in. Battery cable is yeah, $334.15. Maybe Carl added a one on there, maybe? <laughs> it must be. Um, I'm oh, confused oh, about something else. Oh, it's My mistake, sorry. No, that's, again, I think that's batteries and the cable, too. So that, that would make sense. Well, what about the one underneath that, Jay? Williamson Automotive Truck and Trailer for $1,600. Sixteen seventy four. Yeah, they came out uh, or W four. The with the air brakes did not work. Um, there was a problem with the air dryer. Um, so we got it. He came out and looked, and he got it going. Got it out to him. He replaced the air dryer on it because it, it was frozen up. And then um, when he was getting ready to run it again, we noticed they're leaking, and it was. When their box went on, it was a different box went on last year, and it was down the new hinge for the box was in a position where it hit an air belt and broke that belt, so that included that belt replacement as well. Carl, I found your batteries. <coughs> it's under Granger's. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, box. It's the only place I see batteries. <coughs> I think you just had a want to that 334. Maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what did you do? I said a question down there. <laughs> yeah, paper towels for 270 bucks. Yeah, we bought I think it was five or six boxes of paper towel, the, the, the Z fold paper towel things there, the oh the white ones. Yeah. They're on state contract that we get them from. Judy was thinking it was like Bounty or something, so she was a little I was got two hundred and seventy where where we Oh actually that's a GG line, that's a sewer line, that might be the absorbent, the big blue. Oh, oh that's different. Okay. Type things. Yeah. Right, that's, that's <laughs> they should just describe, describe it a little bit. Describe yeah, paper 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 I, I don't describe <laughs> these. I, I, understand. <laughs> I thought it was a toilet paper for the office. I'll, I'll, I'll make that note. <laughs> I've never seen as many what? questions around this stuff. That's, but you guys are paying attention. Yeah, they're really looking at it. All right. It looks good. So yep. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the claims and warrant. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Trustee Zelke? Aye. Trustee Lancey? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Ethelino? Aye. Motion passes. All right, everyone want to review the uh, common overtime report? I would assume there is some <coughs> overtime. All the snow and ice work. Jake, so you and your team I think did another great job this last round. Yeah. 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 Main Street looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. There's no problem. But even the side street, I mean, there were so many people that just did what a great job you guys yeah. are doing. So thank you, Jake. Sir. So I don't have any questions on this. No. Anyone else does? Nothing? If you don't have any, uh, So I'm going to ask for a motion. Oh, I don't even have to ask for a motion. Right? Because right. It, is, it is what it is. It is. I can't change it. So. Nope. Right. All right. Um, so we can jump right into uh, a discussion that was brought to our attention in our last meeting about uh, changing the meeting times to uh, 6.30 p.m. on a permanent basis versus the 7 o'clock. So I don't know if anyone had an opportunity to think about this. Who brought that up? Um, I'm not really sure who brought it up, but it was a it was at the workshop. Yeah. Um, I think it was talked um, talked about by a couple people, and compared to other villages and towns, and they start the meetings at 6:30. Um, I did not go and research it myself to see if that was actual true data that it was receiving, uh, but I trusted my source, and. I am asking you guys as a group, Jake, everybody, Don, because obviously everyone needs to be here if it's difficult to get here by 6.30. One thing 
I might ask though is if, if you want to change it for ours, do you want also want to change it for planning and planning? I think they would need to be involved in that discussion. Yeah, so we can't just have yeah. just a question from No, no, good good good, good question. Yeah. But I think we need to get to them and see what they want to do. Yeah. I think it's fine with me, but I don't know about everybody else and too, I like it. Big L, big L. I'd rather keep it at seven, but you, you just have to. I would never have time to have dinner, so. But, Time's with me. You know. Kind of I, I don't leave work till like six o'clock, or after six, so. So it'll be tight for you. Yeah. Well, I could get here, but you know, I'll have to sit next to Jake and have him bring something from. Uh, Taco Bell. You know. If I get so many Taco Bell, there's going to be none left. So <laughs> 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 Heather and Jake, I'd like to hear from you guys, too. Have an eating meeting. Mm -hmm. I've got a relatively <coughs> short commute, so I can probably make it almost any time. Right. But, yeah. You know what? Like, obviously, making sure Don's fed and the good mood is important. If the meetings are short, it's not that big a deal. It's only right. when, you know, the meeting goes up. Well, they haven't been uh, that long for, really like, the last... Couple of years now. What's the impact? You know, because you have the office open until on Thursdays. Until six now. So. Yeah, any impact on you? Does that make it are easier? Gonna, are you going to end up with the same problem with trying to get set up by six thirty when you were having trouble getting set up by seven? seven. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought about that. It's just either way, I get to get home earlier, or it's a little. Either way, it's. I'm fine with whatever you guys want to do. Who brought this up? I think that's what it was. Well, it was a discussion at the workshop. I think mean, some of the office personnel bring it up and we just discussed it. Yeah. We had asked if we could do our next couple meetings budget discussions to start at six. Right, I think that started the conversation. Oh, okay. Well, why don't we try it? And if it doesn't work for everybody, try it for a month. And if it doesn't work, we'll go back to seven. Well, I'm not sure we can just try I guess we why can try it for a month. <coughs> Well, you took a you took a you took a resolution at the organizational meeting saying when meetings are started. Yeah. So you'd have to take another resolution to change yeah. that if you wanted to do it. Does you know, for a table until zero. certain meetings, you could. I don't I'm not know. Sure Daryl. I don't know what the favor. I don't know what the impact on the public yeah, is. Gonna, you know, you gotta you gotta think about. Right. You know, people they get they're having dinner, they got families, and now you got you're trying to get them here at six thirty. Oh, well, we can yeah. ask the three of them. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you're lucky that the three of them are here, but you know, you never know who else might want to come. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I also I also think the other thing you might want to consider, not to interrupt, but no, that's okay. Actually, I don't yeah, mind giving a little feedback from the audience. Is that you guys have done a great job trying to get the meetings out on Facebook, and I think that's commendable. But I think your views could go down at six thirty for exactly the same reason that people are eating. And you think about it, seven o'clock is just after, so you've got a sense. I think people might have a better chance of picking up on the meeting. Not only coming here personally, when you have a public hearing, say, it would be easier for them. But you obviously our attendance in the audience sometimes gets you know sparse. But you know you're getting how many hits sometimes? I mean, it's like it's, in the it's on and off. It's on and off. But it can it get. Varies. But it can be fifty. It can be fifty hits that's, on there. That's so. another discussion, which is the next topic when we are done with this that we're going to talk about. Yeah, because there's to. some ways that we can change that in algorithm and Facebook format. But, but some now that we can I'm acting mayor, you may get a couple thousand hits tonight. This is very true. Jake's <laughs> attendance. We've already had actually a comment said hi, Jake already. Oh, so look at that, Jake. Jake. Jake's actually a popular one tonight. <laughs> So just something to think about. Okay, that's a good point. Anyone else? And board, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Six thirty seven. All right. So my hope is you're just bringing up zoning and planning board. Or are you going to keep all your meetings the same, or are some meetings going to be at six thirty and some meetings at? Right. 7? I think we'd have to discuss that with them too. I think and, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. and 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 for our planning and zoning, you know, people okay. work and they may not. I appreciate the feedback. As Mr. Wright brought up, he would probably miss his supper until later if he had a long meeting. It was bad. There are people like me who are diabetic. I like to eat on time. <laughs> Just moving it up to half hour has disrupted that for me. And 
also many people like me still get a lot of their news from the TV news, which I missed the last half of the national news tonight. I did hear what Trump's up to, but that's about all. <laughs> well, I appreciate the feedback, and we will. My goal tonight was um, to sneak this by because Daryl wasn't here, but that's not going to happen, so we will have another discussion and table it. Um, and I appreciate everyone's feedback. But now I need to ask for a motion, correct? My legal counsel to enter into our public hearing. Correct. Um, so I'll ask for a motion to do that. I'll make that motion. So this public hearing uh, was to allow people to come in here and talk about the local law here regarding the um, specific requirements for the wireless communication, specifically small cells. So um, if anyone would like to come up and speak or have any feedback or comments to it, um, we would like to hear from you. Nice that they have the phone, right? Get some uh, phone calls. Yes. Anybody in Facebook uh, comments? Besides Jake's friends? Nope. <laughs> All right. So I guess um, we can close the public hearing. Right now. I have to leave it yep. open at any certain amount of time. Right now. No. Okay. So can I get a motion to close the public hearing? I have a motion. All right. Gotten the comments from, Cullen? from Mike, yeah, Mike Roberts yeah. from Cullen Logger. He said his email said he'd get them right out, but I haven't, we don't have them yet. And in view of the fact that the mayor's not here, I don't know if you want to post, you, want to, you don't have to vote tonight anyhow. No, we, we didn't want to vote and, or have lunch. Right. So, if, so we'll, we'll wait and see what Mike Roberts has to say. If in fact, the consensus is to is to make any changes based on Verizon's comments and Mike Roberts' comments. Um, you basically got to start the process all over again. Meaning, uh, take a resolution for a public hearing. You got to have another public hearing, and you got to put the county on notice again, the town of <coughs> Webster and Penfield on notice again. You basically got to do it all over again if you make any changes to the. To the local law. Okay. So now we request this from Nixon Peabody. Was this a request of ours, or is this something they just did for us, or did to give to us? It was kind of I. Oh, here's Tom Grant. Oh, from Verizon. I'd be wrong to say. Are you as well? The uh, the board. There were were there were no comments from the public. I don't know if you want to put anything into the record yeah. or not. Uh, just a, a little bit. Sorry, a little bit late here. I actually walked all around looking for the trying to figure out how to get in. Right, door, yeah. <laughs> it could be confusing because you got to go around to the back. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, you can go to the podium okay. if you like. <coughs> yeah. Sorry for coming I mean, uh, late. Uh, again, for the record, Tom Grinder, and some people out of here on behalf of uh, Verizon Wireless, and uh, really. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to say. Uh, I had submitted a letter uh, the other day, which maybe you all read it. Uh, sorry for the pagination on the, uh, we tried to redline or track change the ordinance to give you comments and questions, and maybe even some revisions in certain cases. Uh, and pagination is not kind of funny, but. Um, and you see we have marginal comments in the red line, but, but basically I just wanted to say this, that. Um, as I said to um, Mr. White, the, it, it's clear that the village uh, had the latest shot clock order and the Telecommunications Act uh, because it's clear that, uh, that there's a really good effort at compliance with the federal law, uh, both in terms of statutory and in terms of the um, uh, FCC uh, order and regulations. Uh, 
And what we wanted to point out in a few cases, and, and uh, that's what we did, I kind of summarized in the cover letter, is that uh, a couple places uh, noted in the red line, it's kind of vague. It says the village will issue a permit, but it's like the village what will issue what permit. So we pointed out a few, case, a few places uh, in the ordinance where we had that uh, comment. Uh, in a few places, it wasn't clear uh, to me <coughs> that, um, that the FCC shot clock order, uh, in, in particular, uh, was being followed in terms of application fees, uh, consultant fees, uh, I, I don't know if the village has had this experience. I, I've been working in the wireless field for since 1985, and all over New York, I've done probably 2,000 wireless sites for Verizon and its predecessors, Rochester Telephone, New York Tel, that type of thing. Um, and there are good consultants out there. Uh, that will do a good job for a fair price. And then there's the consultants that are out there that uh, actually, um, they don't really care about the municipality or the community or the wireless provider. They care about lining their pockets. There's some of them, I won't get into names at this point, but they're out there. So the shot clock order intended that consultant fees would be reasonable. And all we said was maybe you could build in a scope and a and a mechanism to, to which some municipalities have done to actually um, uh, have a have a dialogue with the wireless company, whoever it is, whether it's Verizon, AT and T, Sprint, um, T-Mobile, uh, to have a dialogue about what's the consultant going to do, what's the scope, um, how how. Does the consultant render its bills? I had a case, if you don't mind me saying this, back a number of years ago in Onondaga County, one of the towns there, <clears throat> where the consultant was charging $250 an hour to have some uh, one of its personnel drive from Rochester who <coughs> had no training at all in wireless provisions. I actually handed her the radio frequency materials and I said, well, I guess you're here to review this. She said. I don't know anything about that, and yet charge $250 an hour to be there. I actually said to the town, we're not paying for this. Um, and the town said, well, we're going to get stuck with the bill. I said, I doubt it. I think rather the, this company will back away, which they did. In fact, we said, we'll identify it if they actually just try to collect their bill. Because it was. Anyway, the point is, work with the wireless companies, build in a mechanism, have a fair scope, fair fees, and a, and a good way to build them. Um, I think the wave of the future is 5G and that's small cells, and I think you've started to see some of them here. And small cells, are, and we've defined them in the ordinance for you that use the federal definition. Uh, small cells are in fact what's going to make smart cars work, smart phones work better. Um, it really is the future and it's coming very, very soon. Um, small cells should be highlighted, I think, in your ordinance. Uh, you, you do talk about them a bit, but maybe have their own uh, procedure. They're mostly going to, uh, the wireless companies are mostly going to try to put them on uh, utility poles. Um, they're going to be under 50 feet, they can't be up high. You know, people used to complain about tall cell towers. But here, small cells can't be up high because they're weak enough in their power that they need to be closer to where the phones are. So these days, of, there's no such thing as a 100-foot tall small cell facility, for example. They're going to be on rooftops. They're going to be on poles. And I think that the way the companies are going, they really, really want to just go along the streets on the poles where you have them. Uh, replacement poles, uh, existing poles, utility poles, light poles. Uh, right outside my office in downtown Rochester, there's a light pole that has a small cell on it. I can, I can see it from my, my, my window. Uh, I have to look down at it, though, because it's so low. Um, so I urge you to actually look at small cells as different 
than macro cells, which are what you're normally familiar with. They're the ones that have populated all the towers around here, other places. They're also on rooftops, but they had that full array of eight foot antennas or four foot antennas looking in all directions. Um, and you've done a nice job in, in, in having non-tower uh, sites and tower sites. Um, what I would urge you to do is really pick out small cells and sort of segregate them in your ordinance and put all the rules down in one spot about small cells because that's really mostly what you're going to be, especially in a village, um, but that's mostly what you're going to be seeing from now on. You're not really going to be seeing anybody, I don't think, planning a tower or anything like that. Um, you haven't had many of those anyway, mostly they're on water tower, I've done a number of water towers in the village over the years. So that's what you're going to see there. A couple spots in the ordinance uh, where we thought that things would be contrary to law, for example, um, you seek to be indemnified against uh, by the by the wireless provider for approving a wireless site, and I think that's illegal. I, I don't think municipalities can seek to have themselves indemnified for exercising police power such as zone. So I don't think you need it, but um, but it's in there, and it probably shouldn't be in there uh, because it really isn't. Um, be against contrary to law. Um, you see, you try to keep equipment out, out of uh, areas where there are houses. I don't think uh, that could work in some places uh, in the village and in any municipality, but it's not going to work everywhere. Uh, we find this in the city of Rochester, dense urban neighborhoods. We're trying to put small cells there, and there's nowhere but residential. I mean, it's just residential. So if people want 5G service in where they live, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to get it if you can't put the cells and the equipment in the residential areas. Obviously, there's areas where um, there'll be like a boundary between uh, housing and uh, res commercial or industrial or other non-residential districts. And there you have a little bit more leeway. But if we're really, anybody's really trying to cover a neighborhood, they're not really going to be able to do it under the ordinance. They have to be able to uh, uh, permit, um, I mean, as a practical matter, you have to permit um, wireless equipment and facilities to be in residential areas. State law requires that anyway. The state case law under Rosenberg. Um, Cellular Telephone Company versus Rosenberg, sort of like 1993 case that uh, the Court of Appeals that says that basically you can't stop wireless anywhere. You can regulate it, but you can't just simply say you can't have in this district. And the town amended one time after that case came out, the chair of the planning board said, this is easy, we will just allow these in industrial districts and then not have an industrial district. <laughs> Uh, nor do people want that. I think at this day and age, I think the, the real issue is um, the wireless has proven itself. Back then, maybe not so much, but now it's proven itself. So you want to, and I think you've done a good job in, in working to facilitate that uh, in your ordinance. I think you have a couple more steps to go. Um, um, your, whether it's the planning board or the village board or the zoning board, who will regulate different aspects of this one actually an application <coughs> comes in, uh, you're going to find that uh, regulations, your normal regulations of no undue or adverse impact on health, safety, and welfare is going to be broad enough to, for you to say in this instance you need screen this, or you need to plant trees around, you need to put a fence around it. But I don't think an outright prohibition is really going to either kind of work with the law, the state law, the federal law also, but nor is it going to really work with what you're trying to do. If you're trying to give everybody access to the service, you're going to have to let wireless companies be in residential areas. Uh, similarly, I don't think that uh, undergrounding uh, is, under the shot clock order, there's uh, 
material inhibition is what they do. You can't materially inhibit these. Um, and then, of course, the federal statute says you can't have an effective prohibition against them. And I think there's sort of an easy path from there to say that probably a flat-out prohibition on undergrounding probably won't pass muster. And again, is probably impractical for a lot of a lot of reasons, mostly cost. But but again, that undergrounding and the proximity to residential uses, uh, I think, will will work against you in what you're trying to do here. So just for clarification, what is undergrounding? Uh, well, it's in your ordinance. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't recall that that term is defined, but I think what it would typically mean to me, in fact, the way I read it was, you take all the equipment and you put it underground, you dig a hole, put it in a wall. It, yeah, I think that's what it means. That's, well, you just discussed doing a prohibition against undergrounding, that's what confused me is. I think that to require undergrounding oh, is, is going to be a problem both in what you're trying to do, but also in terms of rubbing up wrong against state or federal law. I think it's going to be problematic. I mean, the shot clock order doesn't flat out prohibit, it doesn't expressly prohibit, or prohibit the prevention of underground. So the law doesn't, and the shot clock order just came out last year, doesn't say municipalities can't require underground. It doesn't say that. But there's a couple connect the dots. It does say municipalities can't materially inhibit the provision of service, which is getting close to what the statute, the Federal Telecom Act, says you can't effectively prohibit. You can't do something that, in effect, prohibits. The, the, Tom, the section you're talking about yeah. is for ground-mounted accessory equipment. Right. Now, I don't know what ground-mounted accessory equipment is or if it's always going to be required for a small cell okay. or not. But it's, so it's not, the, it's not the antenna itself or the, that, that can't be within 50 feet of a lot in residential right. use. Right. It's the ground-mounted accessory equipment. Right, but the, the ground-mounted equipment you don't want 50 feet away, I don't think, from a residential Well, do you, I, I guess, I don't, I, Technically, I don't know. In every case, do you always, are you always going to have ground-mounted accessory equipment? No, it could be on the pole. Yes, on the if you're in poles or on a roof, it could be on the roof <coughs> or it could be on a pole. What The ground-mounted equipment, I mean, just to give you a, like a for instance, uh, Frontier, when it went through everything with its, uh, its DSL, uh, digital subscriber loop, its attempt, attempt at uh, high-speed uh, internet, you know, have those green cabinets. Those would be that would be ground down on equipment. And what I, I guess uh, our our problem with ground ground down on equipment not being within 50 feet of a residential use. Again, how are you going to provide the service in a residential neighborhood if you can't be within 50 feet of a residential use? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's well. That assumes that assumes that. Every small cell is going to have some ground-mounted equipment. It'll have equipment. Whether it's ground-mounted or not is a different story. Some of the equipment is right on the pole. Right, and that's not prohibited in right. the residential zone. Some of it is on the ground next to a building, and then say a shorter building, and then the the antenna, <coughs> we call the antenna, the small cell antenna, is on the roof. But maybe the equipment can't be up there on the roof. Uh, and so there's a cabling that comes down the side of the building, and then the equipment uh, is is actually on the ground. Okay. Okay. So again, where other what other municipalities have done is to uh, require some level of screening to try to. Because I understand what you're saying, you don't want boxes all over the place on the ground. No, I think it says right here you've got to be placed underground or screened from public view. Anything that's right. Underground or screen. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's different parts of the ordinance. Um, there's a prohibition on ground mount equipment, as Mr. White points out, within 50 feet of a residential use. Which, by the way, the residential use could be in a commercial district. That was another issue I had with that one. But um, um, 
And then there's some areas where, where it's talking about underground in the ordinance. I guess what I'm saying, in both cases, rather than a prohibition, I think you do what you normally do, what you've done for, you know, 50 years in time, which is you look at a proposal and then you say, this is ugly, um, we don't want this here, or we want it over there, we want it behind a wall, we want it behind a board on board fence, we want it behind bushes, and use your kind of inherent police power to steer the wireless provider as close to what you want as you can, as, 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 as feasible. Uh, but an outright, outright prohibition I don't think is going to work. Um, because you, you get to that and it's like, well, if it's prohibited, then we can't do it. Or we now have to go to the zoning board to get a use variance. Which, actually, under cellular versus Rosenberg, you know, have the same standard, but it seems to be a necessary step. What you're really trying to do, I think that, is that in there for aesthetic reasons, mostly? We just don't want to see it? And I would, yeah. I mean, it's mostly an aesthetic provision? Yeah. Well, then I would do something to, in like a site plan, or within a special permit or something to to just simply talk about adequate screening of one type or another to give yourselves the flexibility <coughs> to require a fence. Uh, that can help a bit. Um, sir, I am a retired engineer from Frontier in Rochester College. I uh, was at the forefront of fiber optic development yeah. and uh, spray of signal. Okay. And so I know a little bit about this. And, uh, to, to help with that, the answer to that question, there, there's a, a piece of equipment called a controlled environmental wall that they bury in the ground, and there, there would be where you put your uh, power and related equipment for mm -hmm. these uh, uh, small cells. Um, and I, I could see that happening several times in each block. You know, you're going to need a power uh, supply here for 500 feet, is it? Yeah. And then another 500 feet, 1,000 feet down the road, you get another one. And so it's all over. And it's going to be hard to do in a village to find the space to be able to do that. So the way I look at it is that most of the equipment will be mounted on poles. And you know, yeah. having been a lineman also, I know about that deal too, and it's not going to be exactly the way it sets. It's going to be where they think the best place to put it is. The signal equipment, the pole mounting equipment. And, and that brings up a couple of other questions. That yeah. If this is the time that I can ask them, I don't know if you're done yet, or I have I'm, several Yeah, I mean, months. I'll stand. I, I just wanted to give you a, just like a general overview of like the kind of thrust of our comments. Uh, obviously, we have a lot, but but sure. Uh, we I, I just discussed about the power equipment. Um, there's also something called the signal repeater equipment, which is a larger box, somewhat like the cable TV boxes you see on the poles right now, that are needed to um, bring the signal up as it loses the signal as it goes. So it's a repeater box that strengthens the signal to its original source. Okay. Um, it's going to be needed. And uh, another question that I had was, with the pole lines, um, you're aware that the space on top of poles is owned by our DNA &E at the top, telephone, cable, and now there's going to be cellular. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering if rg and &E will allow Verizon to go above their equipment to install these things, and which I doubt, and I know that it's going to be a huge right-of-way problem with rg and &E. In what sense? Uh, as far as having people flying around in their equipment. Mm -hmm. I know that Verizon <coughs> has signed, uh, I was not part of drafting this or negotiating it, but Verizon and RGD do have a um, whole agreement. So, uh, for example, right now I know out in Greece we're going on a number of RGD calls pursuant to that agreement. Roadside, probably. Right in, well, 
Roadside for sure, right in the right of way. Uh, uh, right, Probably in a, not in backyards. Not, no. As far as I know, I haven't seen any backyard. It's all right of way. And that's, I think, as I said at the beginning, I think that most of the wireless providers that are really building out 5G are expecting that right of way, whole right of way, is the way to go. You, you can put that in there. If you're concerned about that, you don't you just make that clear. You know, yeah. You've got to understand this is 2020 and this is Yeah, not, well, that brings up this stuff. This is going. In Webster, in the village of Webster, we have most of our backyards already have a, a, two poles in each yard. Yeah. Uh, um, they went through and, and replaced a lot of these old poles through uh, osmosis. And now we have two poles in most of the backyards. So if the new pole isn't high enough or has too much equipment on it, then we're going to put a third pole in there. I mean, that's, that's between the utilities to work that out, right. but I could see that happen. Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm a, well, I think under your ordinance, you treat differently a pole that's off the right of way and a pole that's in the right of way. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So you'll handle that that way, and you're going to be guiding people, I'm guessing, uh, wireless companies into the right of way poles as opposed to the backyard ones, right? So that's what we need to think about for does it the and, and finally, I have one more question. And having read through this twice, it, it appears to me that the FCC and Verizon are paired up to um, really dismiss all of the things that are in our ordinance, our planned ordinance, as far as um, when I looked at revisions and deletions and all that, and this, the things that are important to us were just systematically deleted. I, well, I, well, actually, that's one good reason to get together and talk about it. Um, that certainly, when we went through this, wasn't the intention. The intention was to, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not. Gonna, I, I don't want to argue with. You. I'm not sure that that's what happened. Um, it's suggested. Well, as I said, there are areas that we thought were vague that needed just tightening up. There were areas that we thought um, were inconsistent with federal law. And there were, as I said, the other major area is to, to really treat small cells, or really, in a sense, knock it out of the park with small cells in your ordinance, because that's about, that's almost virtually everything you're going to see from now on. And so, like, if you were going to say, well, we're only going to, like, really look at one part of the ordinance, I would say really look at the small cell part, because that's really what we're going to say. Uh, and in that one, it was, well, what do you want to do with small cells? If they're going to be on a, just a, for instance, if they're going to be on a pole, an existing pole, um, do you want to treat them as a building permit? Uh, as a subcategory of the non-tower WCF, do you want site plan review? I don't think any in any of these. We, we, I think you mostly look at special permit or building permit. Here, I don't. I don't see that there was a, that third mechanism, like a site plan review, which for me would be, you know, go over toward the the building permit side of things, but instead of just having the code officer or the building department issue a building permit, uh, if you wanted a level review of like a small cell, I would say make it subject to your site plan approval. Because again, what you're really looking at, what you're really guarding here is aesthetics more than anything, I think. Uh, obviously, you want to protect any village poles, you want to protect the integrity of the structures, but you're really looking to let companies provide the service, but with a real view to aesthetics and how are you going to walk. So that's what I would concentrate on. So I think there's some real horror stories out there when you, when you look at one, especially the early ones, these where you've got one pole and there's six cabinets hanging off of it. If eight foot off the ground, it's, um, you know, the, there's an aesthetic quality, but there's also a, a safety quality. Safety, as well. Sure. Stuck on it. Wasn't it? 
far as arms, you know, yeah. the amount of weight that's on a pole. Yeah, I agree. Right? I'm not on the board, but I do have some questions. I appreciate your expertise in coming in. Um, as, as the board considers trying to address everybody's needs, the residents' needs and, and the company's needs, and they're going to put this in, some of the technology or uh, more technical questions, you know, it's kind of hard to regulate something that you, you don't understand. I know Carol's got a background in it, but I think most of the rest of us do. I mean, I still get my kid to make my phone do stuff I wanted, wanted to do, so. so um, <laughs> the, the small cell, do you, does that augment the tower base, or is that going to, in the future, is that replacing the tower base? cellular installations. I understood small yeah. cell would increase capacity almost, not signal. Yeah. They call it almost like the, I'm trying to think of how they phrase it, it's almost like the under network. Okay. So you have your basic network of macro towers, and as I said, I started working on these in 1985, I think, and 250 foot towers booming out 10 miles, mm -hmm. and for the five users that had phones. And so there, it wasn't an issue of capacity. As people, more and more people got, and I've been a part of a whole wave, is the, the, all the structures uh, that come down. Uh, so if you look along Route 17 or 86, as you head from like over to Chautauqua County, all I am, and then Jamestown, I, mean, I was on some 400 foot towers. No capacity. And so ever since then, the, the, the the center lines of these antennas have been coming down. Uh, we used to be on Pinnacle Hill in Rochester. Mm -hmm. Not there anymore, it was too high. And it interfered, it was, it was actually interfering with the whole network. So, but, so the basic macro network is 100, 150 feet, or maybe 80 to 150 feet now. And these small cells are down at 30, 40, 50 feet, 20, 30, 40, 50. Because in the old days, if you started to run out of capacity, you would divide the cell and you would put a new macro site in. Well, you can't do that in most of the populated areas anymore because they're too close together. So I think as you're saying, you put in these small cells that have a radius of 500 feet or so, and they can actually create capacity. Um, and so, as opposed to what do we do with the whole map, macro network, we can't start taking down all these and putting back two where we have four or three where we have five. So the micro cells, these small cells, are the answer to de de densifying the network without disrupting the whole thing. Well, and you answered one of my other questions about the 500 foot radius. Is there, is this equipment, um, I'm assuming the equipment's not going to be shared amongst providers, so if Verizon has a tower here, and then 500 feet later, or 1,000 feet later, with 1,000 foot radius, 1,000 foot later, there's another one, another 1,000 one. There's AT&T going to come in in the middle, in between those ones, and then T-Mobile come in in between those, and however many providers <coughs> there is, yeah, you know, basically 5,000 foot by the number of providers, and that's how many, you know, if there's 10 different wireless providers, which <coughs> it seems like it's going the opposite way to fewer and fewer, but if there's 10 different, does that mean there's going to be one every 100 feet? Probably not. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good question. I mean, it, it, in the old days, it was conceivable um, that, especially when it was just two providers, in the old days it was the A band and the B band of cellular, and it was just the incumbent telephone company had a license, and then say, we could get together and have the other license as entrepreneurs or something. And they had their own networks entirely. In fact, um, we finished one in, in, in uh, Chautauqua County, and AT&T, what is now AT&T, tried to get on it. And we said, no. You know, it took us two years fighting for this. No, go get your own. And they actually took us to the FCC. I, I say we, but me was the company. To the FCC and said they're not playing fair. But when PCS came along in like the mid-90s with Sprint, uh, Nextel, uh, you know, T-Mobile. There were so many of them that the companies started cooperating and getting together and actually putting, co-locating on each other's facilities um, 
as a as a primary choice. Uh, no fight over a tower, it's already there. We'll sort of tinker our network to, to work around it. And that, from the 90s till today, that's sort of been the way they've been operating. And the, there's consolidation, we're down to about pretty much like four wireless providers now. Uh, with the small cells, um, you're not, it's not the same thing as would they share a tower. Uh, they will share a tower. A small cell, um, there's not too much to share uh, because they're not going to be on towers. They, they may be on poles in the right of way. And I think, I'm sorry, Carl, I couldn't see your last name. But Lauer. Lauer. As Mr. Lauer said, um, you know, you're not, RGE is not going to let everybody be on one of its poles. Um, because it, it, as you say, you don't want everybody climbing up and down poles, nor would Frontier. Um, so you will have some limited sharing of poles, and there is limited sharing of poles. There won't be wide scale sharing of poles. Um, they may be on different poles. I, mean, I don't know. Actually, right now, if hardly anybody but Verizon is in the 5G small cell game. I mean, I don't know where the other providers are, but they're, if they're there, they're way behind Verizon right now. I mean, uh, Verizon could uh, basically rent the internal part of their equipment, parts of their, at, at different frequencies and so forth. Yeah, I'm not, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, like you a, could like, use the same equipment, but mm -hmm. with different uh, frequencies. Yeah, I'm not. And that had to put another unit on the pole. That's possible. I know that in, uh, that would be akin to like a distributed, um, um, that, like a DOS network, uh, a yeah. distributed antenna system network. I don't understand the technology that not ever taught me that part, but I think you're right. They can actually share some of the same, actually physical equipment, yeah, it's, the antennas. It's like what they do uh, for telephone over cable TV. Right, and also, actually, up on Pinnacle Hill, the TV stations, uh, Share antennas for their HD network too, the broadcasting. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little bit too technical for me, but I mean, I think you're right. It's, I'm sorry, I just had one when you when you mentioned RGE and uh, you know RGE letting people on their phone. If if RGE has an, an easement or a right of way for transmission of electricity, does that automatically extend to the transmission of uh, communications? Good question. Um, yeah, that's a great question. And, and can they give that away? If, we, if they're in the right of way, <coughs> can they, you know, they can allow their electric, electric lines there. How do, you know, they can't put an ice cream stand on top of the pole just because they have a right to have their pole there for electricity. electricity. Yeah, well, let me, let me just say this, because we also represent, you know, done work for rg and &E for the last 35 years or so. And I would say that uh, a company that has a franchise and the right to be in the right-of-way has much more leeway in the right-of-way than it does on private property. I don't think I should say, really get into it. Well, it's, I just say, about, I heard one of the highway schools we went to about, um, there's a right away if somebody wanted to run a water line down, but it was the right away is yeah. prescriptive, yeah. Um, and they wanted. I think it was Massachusetts. They wanted to run a water line down. And the guy said, "No, you can't run it there. You have it for ingress and egress, not for water." Lines. Well, so and to your point, it. in New York, there are all kinds of cases that made a lot of people unhappy, where where the the highway department or the, the state or the county or the municipality had had easements for roads. And the courts say <coughs> that you can run electric there because you're going to have signs, you're going to have lighting, and they're actually ancillary to actually running a road. But if you want to put um, some other kind of utility in there, forget it. You know, remember there was a, well maybe I don't remember, but a long time ago, some of you guys might remember, there was the controversy over the landfill in Braga, and that was one of the big things that had to be solved because some of the easements, exactly what you're talking about, 
they thought, well, if they're our easement, we can do what we want with it. Well, no, because they're for certain purposes, and ancillary purposes that actually work for it. So, again, the electric for lighting or for signs on the highway, fine. That doesn't mean you can run water lines or anything else there. Okay. And I have one more request, if I can, then I'm going to shut up. Because it's Valentine's Day and everybody wants to go home. Um, is it possible to send a word document to us? Because yes. If, yeah. if it was scanned and we can't see the red lines, it's all black and white. You can't see the red lines? No, I see little faint lines, and I think that some things are crossed out, but it's not. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. definitely crossed. It's, it's out I, ju I just looked at it, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to dive into all of it. Wait, I mean, you don't black see this? No. No. I, just, I see it's scanned in black and white. Yeah. Uh, it's vague. It's pretty vague. Oh, what I had. Yeah, we can oh. we can get you. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a second. You sent it to me. We can get copies that look like this. Yeah, if you sent it, well, that's what we have. It's just not the color. So if you did, we scan it. I oh, it. okay. So this is on our end. We scanned oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was yeah, scanned okay. before we yeah. number. <laughs> so we have it electronic. <laughs> yeah. If you scan it in color, yeah, we'll get the color. Yep. Right. Oh, that's great. That's right. <laughs> I just put your crazy. Thing get scanned in color. How do you write it down after I can show you? And then, uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, <laughs> I'm still getting the other one. This, this is a word document. Yeah. So you can, yeah. Yeah, you can work with it. Yeah. But if you could email it to us, that would be great. We got oh, it in course. paper copy, and then I scanned it. And also I think, I, yeah, it in fact, I think there was a problem last week. I think they tried to, I was, I sort of went out of town. Uh, I can give you my email. School retreat, huh? I can give you my email. Yeah, okay. Uh, but we'll certainly send you electronic copies. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I thought we were supposed to. No, I think all we got was the was the hard copy. Did yeah. you get it? You didn't get an electronic copy either. No. From Dan Brennan. No. 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 I think we were waiting for that. Yeah. We got. Um, they, 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 they FedExed just the, the hard copies. Yeah. So we ended up scanning them. Oh, okay. No, that uh, we, you were we supposed need. to get electronic and a hard copy. I never got an email now. Okay. Let me send that to you then. Okay. Are sure and Williams brought this? Just walked in. Are sure? <laughs> I was just sending you a commercial. Oh, good year. I was just sending you a text at the Vader there. <laughs> hey, Louis Greer. It's all for Mayor. What's going on? Um, <laughs> that's the Mayor Byers. We're being debriefed a little bit. Um, Romero, this is Tom Reiner that represents Verizon. That he authored the letter that was sent along with the um, their comments. Welcome. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. And so we were just going okay. through some of those. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, we've already asked them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, move the tape. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, some of the things that I did have a question on, actually NICOM has, a, uh, has an article regarding um, the uh, wireless gap. And uh, looking at that, it had some degree of uh, further explanation in terms of some of the things that were put down as, uh, in your letter, as uh, restricting or whatever. So okay. I will try to coordinate those. And As I, I think I said to Mr. White on the phone the other day, this, this ordinance that you have here, I've looked at a bunch of them now uh, over the last several months, and this is, to me, this was the best one I've seen in terms of um, trying to get done what you want to get done, but also kind of at least adhering somewhat to federal statutory and regulatory law. So. <coughs> That, that was our intent. Yeah, well, I think you did it. <laughs> you did it. So, uh, when we're done, I'm going to sit here and just look through my phone and see if I have electronic copy right now. Because I know there was an issue in the transmission. I was on a retreat with some 
15-year-old boys at McQuaid. Uh, and so I missed it when we sent it, actually sent it out there. So I got to like look at that. So. so thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And as I said, I'll just sit here and just look and if I can find something, I'll send it to you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so before we get to the attorney piece, uh, you had something you'd like to share with us? Oh, yeah. Um, should I go up to the podium here? Sure. Yeah, let me the camera on yourself. Let me get the camera on me here. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, how are we doing today? Everybody? Good. How are you? So basically, uh, you guys brought me on around this time last year to start recording a lot of the meetings, and then eventually we moved into transitioning that into a live feed on Facebook, so that way the local area and public can see live what's going on and not actually be in the room. Um, to go ahead and continue doing that and grow that further, it's going to involve a little bit more activity on your Facebook page. It's going to involve doing a little bit more effort on engaging through the algorithms of Facebook, maybe paying for some boosted ads that are not that expensive, we're talking five, six bucks, and just kind of certain events you have going on, targeting the community so that way they see that it's happening. You have a Facebook page right now, but you have probably 15% of your community actually following the page. The rest of them don't even know what's going on. So you got to entice them to come. You need to give more attention to your Facebook page so then they see that this is even happening. Because unless they're following your page, they won't see that this is even happening. So um, Heather had mentioned going, coming about some different ideas and some things to do, but that her schedule doesn't really allow her the time to be able to do a lot of that. So I offered to take on that responsibility for you guys and kind of help with the postings and with the theory. And it would be something that would not happen immediately. This is something that would take a good six months to really yep. do. It's not something that you just snap your fingers and everybody's going to be there. It's going to take actively getting involved more with certain things and with the community. Going into the summer months, not too far around the corner, thank you, um, we'll be able to actually get more involvement with this page. And so I have no problem doing that and continuing with the filming here and doing everything I'm doing. The only thing that I would ask is a bump in the current pay that you guys are now giving me. So we are right now giving me the $20 an hour with a three hour minimum. And I would just ask that if we could raise that to a $25 an hour, and then I would, you know, the time that I would spend would just be billed. It might be a total of two hours for the whole week type thing, if that. <clears throat> so that was my proposal for you guys to think over and make a decision on. I got a question. Yeah. Could you link that, uh, our, our meetings, to a, a uh, Facebook page called Webster Neighbors? Yeah. I mean, there's, you can. There's like 8,000 yeah. views on it. Uh, yeah. We could, we could definitely work on linking it. Yeah, there's a way to go about that and have it so it's Because I think Webster, uh, at least around the village, I know that Webster uses uh, the Webster name. What it would take is, realistically, the easiest way to do it is whoever is maintaining and running that page. Mm -hmm. If that person just shared our live video at 7 o'clock when it starts, then people would see it there, and that would immediately start growing our feed. That would be one way could to you, help grow our feed. Could you coordinate that? I could definitely coordinate that. You just have to get me in touch with the right people. I think we should do that. Yeah, definitely. Heather's also talked about possibly if it was, you know, we could get the local community involved more, even the school district, if they wanted to get involved more with running some of the videos here. I mean, I'd be here with them. You know, if any students in the film program wanted to get on board with being a part of this, you know, it's just, it's really just getting out there and making that engagement. You know, I think that that's something that over the years people have forgotten how to do. Technology is great and we can all talk to each other, but the engaging is starting to disappear. So, um, I'm 100% I'm in favor for it. Um, oh my goodness. Yes. I appreciate what you did so far. Um, good. You fit in well, great personality, and I think Thank you. we'd like to, uh, I would love for you to try to get this. Um, a livelier mm -hmm. was part of our, our, our things when we walk door to door is we talk to people about ways to increase um, these meetings or people at these meetings and 
getting involved, and I think that's the way to do it. Um, so I'm in favor of it. I don't know Absolutely. if anyone else thinks. Absolutely. I mean, you've been a great at you I appreciate that. Um, I would ask the mayor, but I think, yeah, I think if we were in favor, we could, could vote, right? There's no reason why we couldn't. Yeah. I'll just step Talk back to, to my role. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Mayor, would you like your seat back, by the way? One DMV no, chat button. I'm very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Soon. New now. Chairs are nice. I'm testing out the new chair then. All right. I'll just feel bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh, I do like the idea of linking the page and um, getting ourselves increased exposure on Facebook. I think it's necessary. I'm not sure. And I think that for some of the summer activities, um, that we would be able to um, advertise a little bit also mm -hmm. uh, with um, like the booklet that Bid puts out, uh, that kind of thing, where we have a presence in that book so people who are getting that also see that we have a presence here. Um, I think it's uh, something that we can consider, we should consider, and then we can probably bring it up at the next board meeting. Uh, I would like to just have a, a, a quick calculation of maybe a guesstimate uh, for budget as we look at budget. So, and I, I am in favor, but I would like to take it one step further and just go through the <clears throat> Make sure that we're solid to do that. If you don't have a problem with that, I would go to one of the guys. I don't know. Next, next, next meeting. Uh, That's up to you. Well, it it so seems like it's a minimal, minimal I, I, amount. So I, I, I don't think we really need to do it. I think if we did it, if you want to do a six, six residential use, mm -hmm. right? So that well, that assumes that assumes that every small cell is going to have some ground mounted equipment. It'll have equipment. Whether it's ground mounted or not is a different story. Some of the equipment is right on the pole. Right, and that's not prohibited in right. the residential zone. Some of it is on the ground next to a building, and then say a shorter building, and then the the antenna, we call the antenna, the small cell antenna, is on the roof. But maybe the equipment can't be up there on the roof. Uh, and so there's a cabling that comes down the side of the building, and then the equipment uh, is is actually on the ground. Okay. Okay. So again, where other what other municipalities have done is to uh, require some level of screening to try to. Because I understand what you're saying, you don't want boxes all over the place on the ground. Oh, I think it says right here you got to be placed underground or screened from public view. Anything that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's different parts of the ordinance. Um, there's a prohibition on ground mount equipment, as Mr. White points out, within 50 feet of a residential use. Which, by the way, the residential use could be in a commercial district. That was another issue I had with that. But um, um, <coughs> and then there's some areas where where it's talking about underground in the ordinance. I guess what I'm saying, in both cases, rather than a prohibition, I think you do what you normally do, what you've done for, you know, 50 years in zoning, which is you look at a proposal and then you say, this is ugly, um, we don't want this here, or we want it over there, we want it behind a wall, we want it behind a board on board fence, we want it behind bushes, and use your kind of inherent police power to steer the wireless provider as close to what you want as you can, as, 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 as feasible. Uh, but an outright, outright prohibition, I don't think, is going to work. Um, because you, you get to that and it's like, well, if it's prohibited, then we can't do it. Or we now have to go to the zoning board to get a use variance. Which, actually, under cellular versus Rosenberg, you don't have the same standard, but it seems to be a necessary step. What you're really trying to do, I think that, is that in there for aesthetic reasons, mostly? We just don't want to see it? And I would, yeah. I mean, it's mostly an aesthetic provision? Yeah. Well, then I would do something to, in like a site plan, or within a special permit or something, to, to just simply talk about 
adequate screening of one type or another to give yourselves the flexibility <coughs> to require a fence. Uh, I can help with that. Uh, sir, I am a retired engineer from Frontier in Rochester College. I uh, was at the forefront of fiber optic development yeah. and uh, it's a radio signal. Okay. And so I know a little bit about this. And, I'm sure uh, that sounds like to, to help with that, the answer to that question, there, there's a, a piece of equipment called a controlled environmental wall that they bury in the ground, and there, there would be where you put your uh, power and related equipment for these uh, uh, small cells. Um, and I, I could see that happening several times in each block. You know, you're going to need a power uh, supply here for 500 feet, is it? Yeah. And then another 500 feet, 1,000 feet down the road, and you get another one. And so it's all over. And it's going to be hard to do in a village to find the space to be able to do that. So the way I look at it is that most of the equipment will be mounted on poles. And you know, yeah. having been a lineman also, I know about that deal too, and it's not going to be exactly the way it, it sets. It's going to be where they think the best place to put it is. The signal equipment, the pole mounting equipment. And, and that brings up a couple of other questions. That if this is the time that I can ask them, I don't know if you're done yet, or I have um, several Yeah, I mean, I'll stand. I, I just wanted to give you a, just like a general overview of like the kind of thrust of our comments. Uh, obviously, we have a lot, but but sure. Uh, we I, I just discussed about the power equipment. Um, there's also something called the signal repeater equipment, which is a larger box, somewhat like the cable TV box as you see on the poles right now, that are needed to um, bring the signal up as it loses the signal as it goes. So it's a very heater box. It strengthens the signal to its original source. Okay. Um, it's going to be needed. And uh, another question that I had was with the pole lines, um, you're aware that the space on top of poles is owned by our GE at the top, telephone, cable, and now there's going to be cellular. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering if rg and &E will allow Verizon to go above their equipment to install these things, and which I doubt, and I know that it's going to be a huge right-of-way problem with rg and &E. In what sense? Uh, as far as having people flying around in their equipment. Mm -hmm. I know that Verizon <coughs> has signed, uh, I was not part of drafting this or negotiating it, but Verizon and RGD do have a um, whole agreement. So, uh, for example, right now I know out in Greece we're going on a number of RGD calls pursuant to that agreement. Roadside, probably. Right in, well, roadside for sure, right in the right of way. Uh, uh, probably in a, not in bad areas. Not, no. As far as I know, I haven't seen any backyard. It's all right away. And that's, I think, as I said at the beginning, I think that most of the wireless providers that are really building out 5G are expecting that right of way, whole right of way, is the way to go. So you, you can put that in our, in your concern about backyards, you just make that clear. Got to understand, this is 2020, and this is yeah. Not, well, that brings up this question. This is going. Uh, you know, in, uh, in, in Webster, in the village of Webster, we have most of our backyards already have a, a, two poles in each yard. Yeah. Uh, um, they went through and, and replaced a lot of these old poles through uh, osmosis, and now we have two poles in most of the backyards. So if the new pole isn't high enough, or has too much equipment on it, then we're going to put a third pole in there. I mean, that's that's between the utilities to work that out. Right. But I could see that happen. Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm a, well. I think under your ordinance, you treat differently a pole that's 
off the right of way and a pole that's in the right of way. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you'll handle that that way and you're going to be guiding people, I'm guessing, uh, wireless companies into the right of way poles as opposed to the backyard ones, right? Something we need to think about for yeah, the other thing. thing. And, and finally, Street. I have one more question. And having read through this twice, it, it appears to me that the FCC and Verizon are paired up to um, really dismiss all of the things that are in our ordinance, our planned ordinance, as far as um, when I looked at revisions and deletions and all that, and this, the things that are important to us were just systematically deleted. I, well, I, well, actually, that's one good reason to get together and talk about it. Um, that certainly when we went through this wasn't the intention. The intention was to, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to argue with you. I'm not sure that that's what happened. Um, it's suggested. Well, as I said, there are areas that we thought were vague that needed just tightening up. There were areas that we thought um, were inconsistent with federal law. And there were, as I said, the other major area is to, to really treat small cells or really, in a sense, knock it out of the park with small cells in your ordinance because that's about, that's almost virtually everything you're going to see from now on. And so, like, if you were going to say, well, we're only going to, like, really look at one part of the ordinance, I would say really look at the small cell part because that's really what you're going to see. Uh, and in that one, it was, what do you want to do with small cells? If they're going to be on a, just a, for instance, if they're going to be on a pole, an existing pole, um, do you want to treat them as a building permit? Uh, as a subcategory of the non-tower WCF? Do you want site plan review? I don't think any in any of these, we, we, I think you mostly look at special permit or building permit. Here, I don't, I don't see that there was a, that third mechanism, like a site plan review, which for me would be, you know, go over toward the, the building permit side of things, but instead of just having the code <coughs> officer or the building department issue a building permit, uh, if you wanted a level review of like a small cell, I would say make it subject to your site plan approval. Because again, what you're really looking at, what you're really guarding here is aesthetics more than anything. Uh, obviously, you want to protect any village poles, you want to protect the integrity of the structures, but you're really looking to let companies provide the service, but with a real view to aesthetics and how are you going to walk. So, that's what I would concentrate on. I think there's some real horror stories out there when you, when you look at one, especially the early ones, these where you've got one pole and there's six cabinets hanging off of it, if eight foot off the ground, it's um, you know, the, there's an aesthetic quality, but there's also a, a safety Good quality safety as well. Sure. So storm, you know, it wasn't it was for storms, you know, yeah. the amount of weight that's going to fall. Yeah, I fall. agree. I, I'm not on the board, but I do have some questions. I appreciate your expertise in coming in. Um, <clears throat> as, as the board considers trying to address everybody's needs, the residents' needs, and and companies needs that are going to put this in. Some of the technology or uh, more technical questions, you know, it's kind of hard to regulate something that you, you don't understand. I know Carol's got a background in it, but I think most of the rest of us do. I mean, I still get my kid to make my phone do stuff I wanted, wanted to do. So, so um, <laughs> the, the small cell, do you, does that augment the tower base or is that going to? In the future, is that replacing the tower based cellular installations? I understood small yeah. cell would increase capacity almost, not signal. Yeah. They call it almost like the, I'm trying to think of how they phrase it, it's almost like the under network. Okay. So you have your basic network of macro towers, and as I said, I started working on these in 1985, I think, and 250 foot towers booming out 10 miles, mm -hmm. and for the five users that had phones back then, right? And so, the, 
it wasn't an issue of capacity. It was people, more and more people got, and I've been a part of a whole wave, is the, the, all the structures uh, that come down. Uh, so if you look along Route 17 or 86, as you have head from, like over to Chautauqua County, all the way in, and then Jamestown, but I was on some 400 foot towers. No capacity. And so ever since then, the, 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 the center lines of these antennas have been coming down. Uh, we used to be on Pinnacle Hill in Rochester. Mm -hmm. Not there anymore, it was too high. And it interfered, it was, it was actually interfering with the whole network. So, but, so the basic macro network is 100, 150 feet, or maybe 80 to 150 feet now. And these small cells are down at 30, 40, 50 feet, 20, 30, 40, 50. Because in the old days, if you started to run out of capacity, you would divide the cell and you would put a new macro site in. Well, you can't do that in most of the populated areas anymore because they're too close together. So I think as you're saying, you put in these small cells that have a radius of 500 feet or so, and they can actually create capacity. Um, and so, as opposed to what do we do with the whole map, macro network, we can't start taking down all these and putting back two where we had four or three where we had five. So the micro cells, these small cells, are the answer to de de densifying the network without disrupting the whole thing. Well, and you answered one of my other questions about the 500 foot radius. Is there, is this equipment, um, I'm assuming the equipment's not gonna be shared amongst providers, so if Verizon has a tower here, and then 500 feet later, or 1,000 feet later, with 1,000 foot radius, 1,000 foot later, there's another one, another 1,000 one. Is AT&T gonna come in in the middle in between those ones, and then T-Mobile come in in between those, and however many providers <coughs> there is, you know, basically 5,000 foot by the number of providers, and that's how many, you know, there's 10 different wireless providers, which <coughs> it seems like it's going the opposite way to fewer and fewer, but, if there's 10 different, does that mean there's going to be one every 100 feet? Probably not. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good question. I mean, it, it, in the old days, it was conceivable um, that, especially when it was just two providers, in the old days, it was the A band and the B band of cellular. And it was just the incumbent telephone company had a license, and then say, we could get together and have the other license as entrepreneurs or something. And they had their own networks entirely. In fact, um, we finished one in, in, in uh, Chautauqua County and AT&T, what is now AT&T, tried to get on it. And we said, no. You know, it took us two years fighting for this. No, go get your own. And they actually took us to the FCC. I guess if we, what the name is the company. To the FCC and said they're not playing fair. But when PCS came along in like the mid-90s with Sprint, uh, Nextel, uh, you know, T-Mobile. There were so many of them that the companies started cooperating and getting together and actually putting, co-locating on each other's facilities um, as a as a primary choice. Uh, no fight over a tower; it's already there. We'll sort of tinker our network to to work around it. And that, from the '90s till today, that's sort of been the way they've been operating. And the, there's consolidation, we're down to about pretty much like four wireless providers now. Uh, with the small cells, um, you're not, it's not the same thing as would they share a tower. Uh, they will share a tower, a small cell, um, there's not too much to share uh, because they're not going to be on towers. They, they may be on poles in the right of way. And I think. I'm sorry, Carl, I couldn't see your last name, but... Lauer. Lauer. As Mr. Lauer said, um, you know, you're not, rg and is not going to let everybody be on one of its poles, um, because it, it, as you say, you don't want everybody climbing up and down the poles, nor would Frontier. Um, so, you'll have some limited sharing of poles, and there is limited sharing of poles, there won't be wide-scale sharing of poles. Um, they may be on different poles. I don't know. Actually, right now, hardly anybody but Verizon is in the 5G small cell game. I mean, I don't know where the other providers are, but they're, if they're there, they're way behind Verizon right now. 
Uh, Verizon could uh, basically rent the internal part of their equipment, parts of their at, at different frequencies and so forth. Yeah, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like you could use like, the same equipment but mm -hmm. with different uh, frequencies. Yeah, I'm not. And that had to put another unit on the ball. That's possible. I know that in. Uh, that would be akin to like a distributed, um, um, like a DOS network, uh, a yeah. distributed antenna system network. I don't understand the technology. It's not ever taught me that part, but I think you're right. They can actually share some of the same, actually physical equipment. Yeah, it's, the antennas. It's like what they do uh, for telephone over cable TV. Right, and also actually. Up on Pinnacle Hill, the TV stations uh, share antennas for their HD network too, the broadcasting. Okay. So, <coughs> yeah, it's a little bit too technical for me, but I mean, I think you're right. It's, well, I'm sorry, I just had one when you when you mentioned RG&E and uh, you know RG&E letting people on their phones. If if RG &E has an, an easement or a right of way. For transmission of electricity, does that automatically extend to the transmission of uh, communications? Good question. Um, yeah, that's a great question. And, and can they give that away if, we, if they're in the right of way? Have they, you know, they can allow their electric electric lines there. How do you know they can't put an ice cream stand on top of the pole just because they have a right to have their pole there for electricity? Electricity. Yeah. Well. Let me let me just say this because we also represent you know I've done work for RGE for the last thirty five years or so. And I would say that uh, a company that has a franchise and the right to be in the right of way has much more leeway in the right of way than it does on private property. I don't think I should say really get into it. Well, it's I just say about the guy in one of the highway schools we went to about. Um, there's a right away if somebody wanted to run a water line down, but it was the right away is yeah. prescriptive, yeah. Um, and they wanted it was Massachusetts. They wanted to run a water line down, and the guy said, "No, you can't run it there. You have it for ingress and egress, not for water." Lines. Well, so and to your point, it. in New York, there are all kinds of cases that made a lot of people unhappy, where where the the highway department or the, the state or the county or the municipality had had easements for roads. And the courts say <coughs> that you can run electric there because you're going to have signs, you're going to have lighting, and it actually ancillary to actually running a road. But if you want to put um, some other kind of utility in there, forget it. You know, remember there was a, well maybe you don't remember, but a long time ago, some of you guys might remember, there was the controversy over the landfill in Braga, and that was one of the big things that had to be solved because some of the easements, exactly what you're talking about, they felt, well, if there are reasons we can do what we want with it. Well, no, because they're for certain purposes, and ancillary purposes that actually work for it. So, again, the electric for lighting or for signs on the highway, fine, but that doesn't mean you can run water lines or anything else there. One more request, if I can, then I'm going to shut up because it's Valentine's Day and everybody wants to go home. Um, is it possible to send a word document to us? Because yes. If, yeah. if it was scanned and we can't see the red lines, it's all black and white. You can't see the red lines? No, I see little faint lines, and I think that some things are crossed out, but it's not. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. definitely crossed it's, it's in. Not I, I just looked at it, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to dive into all of it. Wait, I mean, you don't black. see this? No. No. I, I see it's scanned in black and white. Yeah. It's vague. It's pretty vague. Oh, what I have. Yeah, we can. We can get you. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a second. You send it to me. We can get copies that look like this. Yeah, if you sent it, well, that's what we have. It's just not the color. So if you did, we scan it. Oh, okay. So this is on our end. We scan oh, it, sir. Okay. I thought it was yeah, scanned okay. right before yeah. we over. Yeah. No. So we have it electronically. Yeah. Yeah. If you scan it in color, yeah, we'll get the color. Yep. Right. Oh, that's great. That's right. I just put your thing. Get scanned in color. I'll write it down after I can show you how to do that.
And then he left. I think that's Heather. I'm still getting the other one. <laughs> this, this is a Word document. So you can, yeah, yeah okay. you can work with it. Yeah. But if you could email it to us, that would be great. We got oh, it in course. paper copy, and then I scanned it. And also I think, I, yeah, it in fact, I think there was a problem last week. I think they tried to, I was, I sort of went out of town. Uh, I can give you my email. School retreat, huh? I can give you my email. Yeah, okay. Uh, but we'll certainly send electronic copies. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I thought we were supposed to. No, I think all we got was the, was the hard copy. Did yeah. you get it? You didn't get an electronic copy either? No. From Dan Brennan? No. No. No, I think. We were waiting for that. Yeah. We got um, they, 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 they FedEx, just the, the hard copy. Yeah. So we ended up scanning them. Oh, okay. No, that, uh, we, you were we supposed need. to get electronic and a hard copy. I never got, I never got an email now. Okay. Let me send that to you then. Okay. Are sure and Williams grub is just walking. Are <laughs> sure? <laughs> 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 I was just sending you a commercial. Oh, I was just sending you a text to send the painter there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Williams, come here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's all from the air. What's going on? Um, <laughs> that's the mayor of Ireland. We're being the a little bit. Oh, right. Ramiro, this is Tom Reiner that represents Verizon. That he authored the letter that was sent along with the um, their comments. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. And so we were just going through some of those. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, we've already asked them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, look at the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, some of the things that I did have a question on, actually NICOM has, a, uh, has an article regarding um, the wireless uh, gap. And uh, looking at that, it had some degree of uh, further explanation in terms of some of the things that were put down as in your letters, uh, restricting or whatever. So okay. I will try to coordinate those. And Okay. As I, I think I said to Mr. White on the phone the other day, this, this ordinance that you have here, I've looked at a bunch of them now uh, over the last several months, and this is, to me, this was the best one I've seen in terms of um, trying to get done what you want to get done, but also kind of at least adhering somewhat to federal statutory and regulatory law. <laughs> that, that was our intent. Yeah, why? Well, I think you did it. <laughs> so, uh, when we're done, I'm going to sit here and just look through my phone and see if I have electronic copy right now. Because I know there was an issue in the transmission. I was on a retreat with some 15 year old boys at McQuaid, uh, and so I missed it when we sent it, actually sent it out. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And as I said, I'll just sit here and just look and if I can find something and I'll send it to you right now. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Um, so before we get to the attorney piece, uh, you had something you'd like to share with us? Oh, yeah. Um, should I go up to the podium here? Sure. Yeah, let me get the camera on yourself. Let me get the camera on me here. <laughs> So basically, uh, you guys brought me on around this time last year to start recording a lot of the meetings and then eventually we moved into transitioning that into a live feed on Facebook so that way the local area and public can see live what's going on and not actually be in the room. Um, to go ahead and continue doing that and grow that further, it's going to involve a little bit more activity on your Facebook page. It's going to involve doing a little bit more effort on engaging through the algorithms of Facebook, maybe paying for some boosted ads that are not that expensive, we're talking five, six bucks, 
and just kind of certain events you have going on targeting the community so that way they see that it's happening. You have a Facebook page right now, but you have probably 15% of your community actually following the page. The rest of them don't even know what's going on. So you got to entice them. To come. You need to get more attention to your Facebook page so then they see that this is even happening. Because unless they're following your page, they won't see that this is even happening. So um, Heather had mentioned go, coming about some different ideas and some things to do, but that her schedule doesn't really allow her the time to be able to do a lot of that. So I offered to take on that responsibility for you guys and kind of help with the postings and with the theory. And it would be something that would not happen immediately. This is something that would take a good six months to really yep. do. It's not something that you just snap your fingers and everybody's going to be there. It's going to take actively getting involved more with certain things and with the community going into the summer months, not too far around the corner, thank you. Um, we'll be able to actually get more involvement with this page. And so I have no problem doing that and continuing with the filming here and doing everything I'm doing. The only thing that I would ask is a bump in the current pay that you guys are now giving me. So we are right now giving me the $20 an hour with a three hour minimum. And I would just ask that if we could raise that to a $25 an hour, and then I would, you know, the time that I would spend would just be billed. It might be a total of two hours for the whole week type thing, if that. <clears throat> so that was my proposal for you guys to think over and make a decision on. I got a question. Yeah. Could you link that, uh, our, our meetings, to a, a uh, Facebook page called Webster Neighbors? Yeah. I mean, there's, you can. There's like 8,000 yeah. views on the uh, yeah. we, could, we could definitely work on linking it. Yeah. There's a way to go about that and have it so it's Because I think Webster, uh, at least around the middle of that, I know Webster uses. Uh, the what it would take is realistically the easiest way to do it is whoever is maintaining and running that page. Mm -hmm. If that person just shared our live video at seven o'clock when it starts, then people would see it there, and that would immediately start growing our feed. That would be one way could to you, help grow our feed. Could you coordinate that? I could definitely coordinate that. You just have to get me in touch with the right people. I think we should do that. Yeah, definitely. Heather's also talked about possibly if it was, you know, we could get the local community involved more, even the school district, if they wanted to get involved more with running some of the videos here. I mean, I'd be here with them. You know, if any students in the film program wanted to get on board with being a part of this. You know, it's just, it's really just getting out there and making that engagement. You know, I think that that's something that over the years people have forgotten how to do. Technology is great and we can all talk to each other, but the engaging is starting to disappear. So, um, I'm 100% I'm in favor for it. Um, oh my goodness, yes. I appreciate what you did so far. Um, but you fit in well with your personality, and I think Thank you. we'd like to, uh, I would love for you to try to get this yeah. um, a livelier. Mm -hmm. It was part of our, our, our <laughs> things when we walk door to door, so we talk to people about ways to increase um, these meetings or people at these meetings and getting involved, and I think. That's the way to do it. Um, so I'm in favor of it. I don't know if anyone okay. else thinks. Absolutely. I mean, you've been a great at you probably well, well, I appreciate that. Um, I would ask the mayor, but I think, yeah, I think if we were in favor, we could, could go, right? There's no reason why we couldn't. Yeah. I'll just step Talk back to, to my role. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mayor, hey, would you like your seat back, by the way? One DMT, Jeff. I'm moment. very comfy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Soon. New now. <laughs> I'm testing out the new chairs. I'm All right. I just feel bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, I do like the idea of linking the page and um, getting ourselves increased exposure on Facebook. I think it's necessary. I'm not sure. And I think that for some of the summer activities, um, that we would be able to um, advertise a little bit also mm -hmm. uh, with um, like the booklet that Bid puts out, uh, that kind of thing, where we have a presence in that book, so people who are getting that also see that we have a presence here. So, um, 
I think it's uh, something that we can consider, we should consider, and then we can probably bring it up at the next board meeting. Uh, I would like to just have a, a, a quick calculation of maybe a guesstimate uh, for budget, as we look at budget. So, and I, I am in favor, but I would like to take it one step further and just go through the, you know, <coughs> make sure that we're solid to do that. If you don't have a problem with that. I would go to one week. I, I don't know. The next 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 meeting. Uh, That's up to you. Uh, agenda. It, it seems like it's a minimal minimal I, I, amount. So I, I don't know if we really need to do it. I think if we did it, if you want to do a six six months and then we review it again and see how how it well, goes. We need, let's do it until. But as he mentioned, it does. It's going to take time to do what he's got to do. So it's more of a long term thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, do you anticipate that you'll continue um, working with this in, in terms of your other job that you are doing? Yes. And looking into yes. No, that's not that's right. not going to be an issue. So we're looking at more long term. Correct. Correct. And that's one of the main reasons that I'm looking at the pay increase because I currently live in Mumford. Right. So I do a 45 minute commute to come here. Right. Exactly. So that was one of the main reasons. <coughs> I know what that's like. Going to <laughs> so I'm in favor of voting on it now. All right. All right. <laughs> make a motion. So I'll uh, make a motion to I'll, I'll increase our ahead. services from 20 to 25 an hour. Yeah. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Belkane? Aye. Trustee Polito? Aye. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Mayor Byers? All right. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, guys. What do we need to do to link that with the Western neighbors? I just got to get in touch with whoever's running the page. You can find. You can't find that out from. You can go on that. Yeah. Some of those yeah. pages, you don't know who runs it, and then. Yeah, I'd want to. I'd be leery of linking it before speaking with that person. Yes. yes. Because yes. the stuff that we're putting on there is not stuff that we need to be having tampered with. So to speak, I think that's the best way to word that. <laughs> Do you have any idea, Peter? No. Adam. Yes. Would you have, Would you be able to come and live stream like the jazz fest and stuff like that? That's very possible. Yeah, it's just as long as schedules line up and everything. But that's also a great thing that you could uh, get somebody like in the high school or something that wants to be involved. They might be yeah. part of their photo I mean, department. One thing like that is you have to worry about people behind you. So I definitely want someone that's like. I, I know that's been a concern, and that's a concern with a lot of different or public organizations that are doing it, stuff like this. Yeah. Part of the event that we no, I know. Okay. All right, Don, did you have anything for tonight? Not this subject. The you're on the agenda. Sir. Oh no, I have nothing. Uh, nothing to add to. Okay. Did you eat dinner tonight? I did. <laughs> Jake. Jake. It was Valentine's Day, so I figured I'd show up for a half hour or so. <laughs> Tom doesn't have to worry about that because where's your wife? She's in Hawaii. So no. Oh, oh nice. Right. <laughs> she take your skis with her? <laughs> no, I can't. No, 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 no. I've 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 just got, got uh, two things. Um, I'd like to, if I could respectfully request that on the next agenda we place easements for Orchard Street. There's a storm sewer. Um, there's an area down there, there's significant uh, problem with water. And typically, obviously, right this time of year, there's nothing we can do. Um, but in the past, we've done uh, all over where we can have an easement in going back that serves more than one property. Um, there may be an existing lateral there now. We're still trying to investigate that. Um, but please, at least try to get that on the agenda and then have a discussion. I can send the easements out provide more information about it as well, but I just had a conversation with one of them today. Um, it was something we actually looked at doing about three years ago, um, but it had dried up fast enough three years ago that it wasn't an issue. Now there's significant flooding and they came back to the forefront. So, um, just as a FYI, I guess, and with there. Um, and also just a, a reminder or an alert to everybody, the RG need did send out notices that they're going to be checking everybody's uh, gas meters and lines in their 
uh, houses, especially in the older part of the village, it's not uncommon to have a gas meter still in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, there's information on our GD's website. I think we're going to try to put it on our website as well. Um, the people that are doing it should have, I think it's like a green or an orange ID badge. Um, but obviously, um, it's not very often someone <laughs> comes and knocks on your door and asks to go to your basement. So, um, if there's any questions or concerns, look at our GD's website and um, check out who's who's showing up. So, they talked about 20 minutes in the, in the article that I saw or the letter that I saw. 20 minutes. Yeah, and if you don't invite them in by April, no, May 1st, it could be a $100 assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will make several attempts <coughs> to try to come to the That's all I have. And I did not eat yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sewer, I went to a, a NIWEA um, an air and waste management seminar yesterday. It was very, very interesting. Um, and with the sewer department, I think this, in all cases, last last meeting we did uh, still talking with Lavella on the value of getting some more information. <coughs> Put something soon. Hopefully. Heather, you got anything for the office? Not this time. Oh, yes, sir. Um, our door. We've, um, our door swung open several times with the, with the terrible wind we've had, and um, recently um, it's just not working as well. And we've had Will come to look at it. He, he fixed it temporarily, but he said it's definitely not well, a there's your first problem. <laughs> the, latch, <laughs> the latch doesn't go down all the way. And it's it's problematic because if I'm there alone and I can't lock it myself, one time I luckily I found you outside to help me lock it. It's okay now, but we really think that we should. And also Daryl saw it too. We we think that we should um, get it looked at and get it replaced. It's not safe. I think we can get it repaired before we replace it. Okay, I do. There's some there's two things we can check. Okay, that's all. Does so Jake, do you have any vendors that can look at that or do you need some recommendations? No, we, really what it is, it's a, uh, it's like a, a double door um, in the top, mm -hmm. the bolt goes top and bottom, the bottom right. is not a drill threshold, so the bottom pin can't really go in that well. And then there's a, it's not the original door, there's a vinyl strike plate yeah. where it goes in, where it recesses, and once the door goes open and close a few times, it, Final kind of sinks down, and we have to loosen up the straight plate to slide it up, and then it'll work for a long time again until somebody yells at me. And now the other, the other yeah, issue open. though is yeah, if someone forgets, <coughs> yeah, there's a yeah, the door closer. If someone forgets to latch the, the right door, yes, it'll, it's been open several times. Yeah, so that's an issue. Either, yeah, the one door should hold by tenants. Yeah, the one door should stay fixed. And then just the other door is the one that operates. Right. Okay. You know, that's, uh, but still, we could just get some of you to at least just take a look at it, give us an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyone else have any other announcements? If not, I'll ask. No, I um, talked to um, over at Good Smart. Remember, we were talking about getting various. Um, Businesses in to talk, so I'm working on that to see if we can get them into a meeting. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, we did talk about uh, highlighting businesses, letting them come in, throwing that on Facebook, let them talk about yeah. their business if, if they want for examples yeah. or something. Great idea. So, maybe we could get that. And then, if we start at 6 30, then maybe we could have some food. Right. So <laughs> well, I think we should have birds come over too. <laughs> no, good smoke is much better. <laughs> So, Daryl, we did table the 6.30 uh, thing. There was a lot of uh, um, concerns from Don being able to get to dinner. And then the audience had some, some good uh, points with the audience. Uh, I have concerns, too. I mean, we've really already, like, a Thursday night we've moved um, because of the 7 o'clock we moved the office hour back to 6. If we move the meeting to 6.30, 
Yeah. Don brought that point up. Yes, he did. Yeah, I'm not in favor of that whatsoever. So. All right, so we can talk about it again, but it looks like uh, most of the people are not in favor. Stand on seven. So we'll probably be staying on seven. <laughs> If there's nothing else, I'll ask for a motion to uh, close our meeting. I'll take that motion. Uh, Sorry, Darrell. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to talk. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you want a meeting or Al, we'll be, doesn't matter, 7 o'clock. We'll still be done at 7 o'clock. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Oh, dear. <laughs> thank you again for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> That's yours. Don't you want those? Yeah, well, you know, you know that stuff. That's good. I had a couple. We can jam that right now. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.